Shropshire has been blessed with some of England's most serene rural landscapes. Its colourful red earth, which adds a richness to the chequered fields, contrasts superbly with the sleek pasture escarpments and rocky outcrops of the south, and the charming sleepy towns, villages, lakes and canals of the north. Such a beautiful county lends itself to long distance walkers routes. The original Shropshire Way was conceived by the local Ramblers Association groups in 1978 to link Cheshire's Sandstone Trail with the Offa's Dyke Path and was completed two years later. Unfortunately, in the 2000s, the main route was obscured by 32 different loops. At the 2015 Shrewsbury Ramblers AGM, proposals were made to identify a single main route and to reform the Shropshire Way Association. After consultation, a new 180 mile circular route based on Shrewsbury has been unveiled. Shropshire Way begins at the Kingsland Bridge by the boathouses of the Shrewsbury School whose ex-pupils include Hanging Judge Jeffreys and Charles Darwin. It's time to head for the hills. Although it's less than 170 metres above sea level, Lith Hill the first real hill on the walk offers superb views over the surrounding hills and plains of the county. After descending the aptly named Wilderley Hill, down the beautiful Golden Valley you reach the shelter of bridges where there's a hostel and a cosy pub and where you can trade stories with other walkers. <laughs> Country lanes lined by hedgerow and flower decked grass verges lead the route towards the Stiper Stones. Here paths climb through Bilbury and Heather to the jagged outcrop of Devil's Chair, then onwards to Manstone Rock, which crowns the summit. Bishop's Castle at the end of stage two perches 200 metres above sea level, sheltered from the west winds by verdant pastured hills. It's a quirky place where the main street, which descends from the market hall to the church, is lined by many historic buildings. The way briefly acquaints itself with Offa's Dyke before taking a magnificent promenade on the Keffen Ridge, which gives first glimpses of Clun and its castle. The 12th century Norman castle, which was destroyed by Welsh Prince Oingland Hour in the 15th century, lies on a mound overlooking the town. In his book A Shropshire Lad, A. E. Hausman described Clun as the quietest place under the sun. Stage 4 is highlighted by two hills, one with the ancient fort of Berry Ditches perched on the summit, the other, Hopesay Hill, a wonderful airy summit where you can look back to the delightfully verdant Clun Valley and onwards to the rolling hills of Herefordshire. Stokesay Castle, just south of Craven Arms on stage five, is a fascinating fortified 13th century manor 
next to a fine 12th century church. If there's time, it's well worth a visit before continuing to the twisting wooded valleys of Alden and Brandhill gutters. By the time you get to the River Team at Bromfield, you're closing in on Ludlow, described by poet John Betjeman as the loveliest town in England. Ludlow stands proud on a small hill overlooking the confluence of the rivers Team and Corve. Its tall church tower and castle form recognisable landmarks for many a mile. On stage six, the Shropshire Way hits the heights again. From the outset, Titterston Clee Hill parades itself across the skyline. After climbing an incline to the crumbling old quarry buildings, the way reaches a summit, which is topped by white communications radomes and some rocks known as the Giant's Chair. The views are of panoramic proportions as befits Shropshire's third highest hill and include the highest summit, Brown Clee Hill, which tomorrow's route will scale. From the east side, Brown Clee is verdant, and the way up in spring and summer is beautiful, with the meadows and path sides decked with colourful wildflowers. Like Titterson Clee Hill, the summit is a bit industrial, but it's a splendid viewpoint, taking the walkers' sights right into Wales if the atmosphere is clear enough. The way down uses a wonderful green road, which offers views across the verdant Cove Valley to the limestone country of Wenlock Edge. At day's end, the impressive Wilderhope Manor, a 16th century gabled mansion, is now used as a youth hostel. A short crossfield walk from the manor leads the way to the Wenlock Edge, a 19 mile limestone escarpment formed over 400 million years ago when Shropshire was under the sea just south of the equator. Views to the left are often restricted by the trees and give tantalising glimpses towards the Stretton Hills and the Rekin, but several viewpoints allow you to get a better look. The edge ends at Much Wenlock a pretty market town that grew alongside a 12th century Cluniac monastery. At the end of the day the way descends to Ironbridge. Lying deep in the wooded Seven Gorge this popular tourist spot has become synonymous with the Industrial Revolution and the world's first cast iron bridge designed by Thomas Pritchard for industrialist Abraham Darby III in 1779. On stage nine, the way heads for the Rekin, across the high pastured plateau of Little Wenlock, seen here on the left. The Rekin was formed by volcanic eruptions triggered by the nearby Church Stretton Fault. The climb through woodland to the summit is steep, but the craggy perches on top reward you with views across several counties. To the north lies Wellington at day's end. Wellington is the largest of Telford's borough towns. The Romans built their road, Watling Street, traversing what is now the southern part of the town to link London with nearby Roxeter. The way out through the Wellington suburbs is surprisingly pleasant with good paths taking the route around the nature reserve of Dot Hill Park where there are woods and a number of lakes.
Hormond Hill lies near the end of the stage and the ascent through the woods is gentle. There are fine views of Shrewsbury and its church spires from places on the hill's edge. Hormond's Augustinian Abbey was established in the 12th century under the patronage of William Fitzalan. The high point of the day is on Grins Hill, one of the many sandstone outcrops of Shropshire's northern plains. Grins Hill stone has been quarried here since Roman times. The sandstone has been used to build Hormond Abbey, many of Shropshire's iconic buildings, also on the door surrounds of 10 Downing Street. The stage ends in the market town of Wem, where fine Georgian buildings line the streets. North of Wem, the route comes to Edstaston, where the 12th century church has been described as one of the most complete Romanesque buildings in Shropshire. Around four miles north of Wem, at Welsh End Corner, there are two alternative routes. The first heads north to Whitchurch and Grundley Brook to join the Sandstone Way through Cheshire. The second will complete the northern circular and heads northwestwards to Ellesmere. The Ellesmere route is highlighted by glacial mosses and meres, fascinating places for flora and fauna. The route also joins the Flangothlan branch of the Shropshire Union Canal, which offers an easy paced walk into Ellesmere, past those lakes like this one at Colmere. Stage 13 is all about canals, winding through pretty countryside, often dominated by the distant Breathen and Thwanamunach hills. The former lime quarrying town of Thwanamunach is the start of the home run to Shrewsbury. Much of the morning, the Shropshire Way follows the flood barrier of the meandering River Vernoy all the way to Melvilly. The current black and white timbered church of St Peter's at Melvilly was built in the 15th century, but the font from an earlier building dates back to Saxon times. On Nescliffe Hill's summit at Oliver's Point, you'll be able to look back on your day's walk, which is laid out beneath your feet like a map. On the way down, the Shropshire Way explores the impressive quarried sandstone cliffs and a two-chambered cave halfway up those cliffs, once home to a notorious highwayman, Sir Humphrey Kiniston. The final stage leaves Little Nescliffe and heads south towards the River Severn, which it meets briefly at Shrewardeen, a beautiful village with chocolate box cottages and a fine sandstone church. At Shelton, the way follows the banks of the Severn right into Shrewsbury, such a fitting end to this wonderful walk. As the Shropshire Wayfarer passes beneath the town's bridges and watches the boats once more, he or she cannot help remembering that first day when the joys of Shropshire were merely in the mind. My new guide to the Shropshire Way will be in the shops by November 2019 and also available on Amazon. Hope to see you soon on the Shropshire Way.